brachial plexus is a network of nerves that supplies the upper limb. Brachial plexus is formed by the anterior rami or the ventral rami of spinal segments C5 to T1. If the C4 nerve root is involved, we call it prefix type. And if T2 nerve root is involved, we call it the postfix type of brachial plexus. The roots of the brachial plexus, they emerge between the scalenus anterior muscle and the scalenus medius muscle. So brachial plexus basically consists of the following parts. You have roots, trunks, divisions, cords and branches. The roots and trunks are located in the posterior triangle of the neck. They are supraclavicular. The divisions are located behind the clavicle. The cords and branches are located in the axilla, so they are infraclavicular. Now let's try to understand the formation of the brachial plexus. So brachial plexus was formed from the anterior rami or the ventral rami of spinal nerves C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. These roots unite and form the trunks of brachial plexus. The C5 and C6 roots unite and form the upper trunk of brachial plexus. The C7 continues as the middle trunk. C8 and T1, they form the lower trunk of brachial plexus. Each of these trunk then divides into an anterior division and a posterior division. So in total, we have six divisions in the brachial plexus. All the posterior divisions unite and form the posterior cord of brachial plexus. The anterior divisions of upper trunk and the middle trunk unite and form the lateral cord. The anterior division of the lower trunk continues as a medial cord of brachial plexus. So each trunk divided into anterior and posterior divisions. All posterior divisions form the posterior cord. So we are left behind with three anterior divisions. The anterior divisions of upper trunk and the middle trunk unite and form the lateral cord. What is left behind? The anterior division of the lower trunk. And the anterior division of the lower trunk continues as a medial cord or brachial plexus. Now, coming to the branches of the brachial plexus. Branches from the brachial plexus can arise from the roots, from the trunks and the cords but there are no branches from the divisions. The branches that come out from the roots of the brachial plexus are dorsal scapular nerve which takes origin from the C5 root. Long thoracic nerve also called as the nerve of bell or the nerve to serratus anterior. Long thoracic nerve takes origin from C5, C6 and the C7 roots of brachial plexus. Dorsal scapular nerve that is coming from the C5 root, it supplies the muscles attached to the dorsal side of the medial border of scapula. Because it is dorsal scapular, it is supplying the muscles attached to the dorsal side of the medial border of the scapula. And what are these muscles? The muscles are levator scapulae, rhomboidus major and the rhomboidus minor muscles. Long thoracic nerve. Long thoracic nerve, also called as nerve of bell or nerve to serratus anterior, it comes from the roots C5, C6 and C7 of the brachial plexus. Long thoracic nerve, it supplies serratus anterior. Serratus anterior muscle is inserted on the coastal surface of the medial border of scapula. So this muscle, serratus anterior, it, which is inserted on the coastal surface of medial border of scapula, when it contracts, it helps in pushing the scapula forward, as in punching movements, pushing movements, and it also helps in overhead abduction, that is abduction above 90 degrees. As the serratus anterior is helping in punching movements, it is also called as boxer's muscle. An uh, important point that you should remember about long thoracic nerve is that long thoracic nerve can be damaged during radical mastectomy or axillary lymph node dissection. 
and damage to this long thoracic nerve or the nerve to serratus anterior will lead to winging of scapula. Winging of scapula is a condition where the scapula fails to move forward. Instead, the medial border of scapula goes backward and becomes prominent. Now, moving on to what are the branches coming from the trunks of brachial plexus. Do remember, only upper trunk gives rise to branches. There are no branches from the middle trunk or the lower trunk. Only the upper trunk gives rise to branches. And what are the branches coming from the upper trunk of brachial plexus? The upper trunk of brachial plexus gives rise to suprascapular nerve, also a nerve to subclavius. Talking about the suprascapular nerve, suprascapular nerve supplies both the supraspinatus as well as the infraspinatus muscle. Supraspinatus. Supraspinatus muscle, this is important in initiation of abduction of the arm. During abduction of the arm, the initial part of abduction, about 0 to 15 degrees of abduction is by supraspinatus. 15 to 90 degrees is by deltoid. And more than 90 degrees, that is overhead abduction, is by serratus anterior as well as trapezius muscle. So do remember, the initiation of abduction, 0 to 15 degrees of abduction is by supraspinatus, 15 to 90 degrees till the horizontal is deltoid and overhead abduction above 90 degrees of abduction is done by serratus anterior and trapezius. Nerve to subclavius, as the name says, it supplies the muscle subclavius and also gives off the accessory phrenic nerve. So, accessory phrenic nerve is coming from the nerve to subclavius. So talking about the branches of the cords of brachial plexus. Branches from the lateral cord of brachial plexus are lateral pectoral nerve, musculocutaneous nerve and a lateral root of median nerve. So you can remember these nerves with the mnemonic LML. L stands for lateral pectoral nerve, M for musculocutaneous nerve and the other L is the lateral root of median nerve. The branches from the posterior cord of brachial plexus are upper subscapular nerve, lower subscapular nerve, thoracodorsal nerve, also called as nerve to latissimus dorsi, radial nerve, and axillary nerve. You can remember these as ultra upper subscapular, lower subscapular, thoracodorsal, radial nerve, or axillary nerve. You can also remember it as lunar, lower subscapular, upper subscapular, nerve to latissimus dorsi. Remember the nerve to latissimus dorsi is also called as thoracodorsal nerve, radial nerve as well as axillary nerve. The branches from the medial cord of brachial plexus are medial cutaneous nerve of arm, medial cutaneous nerve of forearm, medial pectoral nerve, medial root of median nerve and a ulna nerve. We can remember this as M for U. Medial cutaneous nerve of arm, medial cutaneous nerve of forearm, medial pectoral nerve, medial root of median nerve and a ulna nerve. Herb's paralysis is damaged to the upper trunk of brachial plexus. We know the upper trunk is formed by C5 and C6 roots. Hence, in herb's paralysis, which is damaged to the upper trunk, you have the involvement mainly of the C5 root as well as the C6. Herb's point is the area on the upper trunk where about six nerves are meeting. An injury to this upper trunk leads to what is called as herb's paralysis. And this usually happens as a birth trauma when during delivery, there is undue abduction of head, neck and shoulder of the baby leading to stretching and injury to the upper trunk or it can happen due to fall on the shoulder as in road traffic accidents. Let's try to understand what are the nerves involved in herbs paralysis. The root values of C5 and C6 are affected. 
Thus, in Erb's paralysis, the suprascapular nerve that is supplying supraspinatus gets affected. Axillary nerve, which has a root value of C5-C6, will be affected. Axillary nerve supplies deltoid and teres minor. Thus, in Erb's paralysis, when the C5 and C6 roots are affected, even the action of deltoid is lost. There is loss of abduction of the shoulder. So, in case of Erb's paralysis, when there is loss of action of deltoid, there is a adducted shoulder. Musculocutaneous nerve has a root value of C5, C6 and C7. And musculocutaneous nerve supplies muscles, biceps, brachialis and coracobrachialis. The biceps and brachialis are innervated by the roots of C5, C6 whereas the coracobrachialis receives innervation from the C7 fiber. Thus, in Erb's paralysis, where there is injury to the upper trunk involving the roots C5 and C6, coracobrachialis is spared. But there is loss of action of biceps and brachialis. Biceps and brachialis, which help in flexion at the elbow and also assist in supination, damage to these muscles in Erb's paralysis leads to an extended elbow and a pronated forearm. Radial nerve has a root value of C5 to T1. Thus, in Erb's paralysis, some of the fibers entering the radial nerve is also affected and these fibers generally supply the brachioradialis muscle. Thus, in Erb's paralysis, because of loss of action of the deltoid, there is an adducted shoulder. Because of loss of action of biceps and brachialis, there is an extended elbow and a pronated forearm. This has been called as a policeman tip hand, waiter's tip hand or a potter's tip hand. Klumke's paralysis occurs due to damage to the lower trunk of brachial plexus. The lower trunk is formed by the nerve roots C8 and T1. Thus, in Klumke's paralysis, C8 and T1 fibers are affected. The C8 and T1 fibers, they supply the intrinsic muscles of the hand like the lumbricals and the interossei. So in Klumke's paralysis, that is the lower trunk injury, the intrinsic muscles of the hand like the lumbricals will be affected. Klumke's paralysis or the lower trunk injury occurs when there is an hyperabduction of the shoulder. When there is undue abduction between the arm and the trunk, as that happens while holding on to something during a fall, while clutching on to something during a fall, when there is a hyperabduction of the shoulder, it leads to lower trunk injury or Klumke's paralysis. The normal function of lumbricals is to cause flexion of the metacarpophalangeal joints and extension of the interphalangeal joints. Loss of action of these intrinsic muscles of the hand leads to extension of the metacarpophalangeal and flexion of the interphalangeal joints. And this deformity is called as the complete claw hand. So complete claw hand occurs in Klumke's paralysis. The first two lumbricals are supplied by median nerve. Thus, clawing of the first two digits indicate median nerve injury. The last two lumbricals are supplied by ulnar nerve. Thus, clawing of the last two digits indicates ulnar nerve damage. But when there is a complete claw hand, suspect Klumke's paralysis or injury to the lower trunk of brachial plexus. In Klumke's paralysis, because it involves C8 and T1 fibers, the T1 fiber, the white rami of T1, it contributes to the sympathetic supply of head and neck region. So in Klumke's paralysis, when there is injury to the lower trunk, there is also damage to the sympathetic supply to the head and neck, leading to what is called as Horner syndrome. Horner syndrome consists of ptosis, that is drooping of the eyelid, meiosis, constriction of the pupil, anhydrosis, loss of sweating, and ophthalmus, as well as loss of ciliospinal reflex. So, Klumke's paralysis 
is also associated with Horner's syndrome.